It's a sweet story. I would like them to stay in the Premier League. You were tweeting me yeah. saying, I love their crappy stadium. <laughs> yeah, I like- I, it was so patronising. <laughs> Hello and welcome to part one of Yahoo Footballing Weekly with me, Yahoo columnist Neil Humphreys. And me, Yahoo editor Jian Kyung. We are just over the international week. Yep. So it's like a quarterly review. Quarterly review. Quarterly review of the English Premier League coming up. So far, yeah. yeah but so before far. we do that, we want to, as always, thank our wonderful sponsor, Starhub. Yep, Starhub all, has been providing uh, all the all the live broadcasts for y'all. Now it's offering some more. Of course. Uh, if you uh, if you go to Candidan two for one pizza, two, they have this one, two one. for one. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. So they have this Premier League pizza bundle, which we, together with StarHub, and if you take part in their contest, you stand a chance to win tickets to see live games mm. of your favorite clubs mm. in the UK. Great deal. Brilliant. So this the fir- this this is the first month they are holding it October. And if you win, you're going to a great game. This is unbelievable. unbelievable. Genuinely unbelievable. Liverpool versus Manchester United at Anfield on 16 December. How what, about that? What more do you want? How more? That's, that's the biggest game. That's for me. Biggest well, game. Of course, it's the biggest game for you, but it's the biggest game in Singapore. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. buy pizza, you stand a chance to win a yeah. ticket. You can go brag to your friends. I was at Liverpool versus Man U at Anfield. <laughs> I think it's a brilliant deal. Yeah, brilliant deal. So here are the here's the website to go find out the details. Go on, take part. Yeah, just buy a Premier League pizza bundle. Start Pe- eating, start dreaming. Two, four, one. Yeah, I love yeah. it. Two, <laughs> four, one. Yeah. Canadian pizza, good guys, good, good sponsors. Guys, good guys. Yeah. All right, let's have a look right. then at the season so far. So what do you think so far? It appeared about eight or seven or eight games. Mm. You know, it's uh, almost, almost a quarter, I feel. But, you know, this, this season, I mean, has been like... I don't know. I don't think there's a dominant team yet. Nope. Which is a good thing Which for is a me. Good thing. Yeah. So Spurs are at the top of the table. West Ham are in the top seven. Yeah. Uh, Brighton, Aston Villa, yep. and, and Manchester United are at the mid, mid table. Chelsea, struggling. Chelsea mid table. Yep. All, all, all good. All good. So, I mean, still still anybody's uh, uh, league. So, you know, there's, 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 I, I don't see every team has got its weaknesses, mm. has got its strengths, has got its weaknesses. So I think it's a very fun, yeah, uh, fun season so far. Um, but um, hopefully Liverpool does does better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more than happy for the league to finish now. West Ham are sitting pretty in seventh. That'll seventh do. Only, that's that's that Mickey better. Mouse European Cup. <laughs> I'll take that. Yeah. But as always, let us know what you think. How has the season gone so far for you? Send all of your comments to Yahoo Southeast Asia on YouTube. Yahoo SG, Yahoo underscore MY on Twitter, Yahoo SEA on TikTok. Brilliant. And yep. as Han Kyong said, we're going to do our fun quarterly review. The highs, the lows, the best, the worst. Yep. We'll kick things off with, and I like this one, the most exciting team to watch. Mm. I, I wonder who's... I think we've got the same team. I, I also think we might have the I same team. I think we might have the same team. Go on, you go yeah, first. Okay, if I want to be really biased, obviously, I say it's Liverpool. And, okay. and with good reason. They have a great front line. Um, you know, they have, uh, they have, uh, you know, the Nunes, they have Salah, they have Jota, they have Diaz, all playing very well at the mm-hmm. moment. But okay, I want to be fair. Okay. I don't, I, I'll leave Liverpool out of the equation and I'll go for Brighton, Hove and Elvin. Okay. Yep. I think from, from the start of the season, they have been like a breath of fresh air. Mm. Mitoma play, play, well, dribbling every, past every defenders. And then Evan Ferguson, like a young Wayne Rooney, bundling through all the all the defense, scaring the defenders with their size, you know. Mm. He looks like a whoa, stocky guy. <laughs> it's just 18 years old only. And then and then it's not just those two, you know, the whole team was like playing very uh progressive, um, attacking, flowing football. They, they they move very quickly, they they attack very quickly, they go back and defense. You know, it's full credit to Roberto De Zerbi, the, mm-hmm. the manager, you know. Obviously he they they put together a system you know, he's just been there for two seasons only. And then he got this good, great system, great system, which, you know, playing pleasing football. I think they're exciting. Every time I watch them, I feel, oh. They just keep finding players yes. and their standing of football keeps increasing. Yeah. They've got Casado and McAllister Soul. Yep. And then they still like barely, barely, barely missed a bit. Yeah. No, yeah. I, that's a good shout. Mm. But for me, the most exciting team to watch is his mob Liverpool. Yeah. And I have to say why. It's not necessary for the reason you think. Watching Liverpool play is like watching a 
kind of dodgy plate spinning act, right? You watch it because really it's exciting and it's exhilarating and you're on the edge of your seat, but really you're waiting for the plates to fall yeah. and yeah. you're waiting for you, the comedy you, you to wait start. You for the first plate to fall and then they just call one goal. Yeah. They did concede one goal and then they would, they would start to spin. It's it great. great. So they, you've got Sabor's lie there and yeah. you know, as you say, yeah. you've got Diaz and Salah and it's yeah. all great and yeah. McAllister, but then Van Dyke and then <laughs> Trent Alexander Arnold and you think, oh. this is fabulous. I never want it to <laughs> exciting. end. Truly exciting. Keep the comedy coming. Thank you, Liverpool. Comedy. You are the most exciting team yeah, to watch well, for me. Fourth. We're still fourth. Yeah. We're not that bad. Comedy <laughs> gold. Comedy gold. No, comedy yeah. gold. All right, what's the next one? What are we uh, doing next? The most dysfunctional team to watch. I think there are a couple, handful of them. Yeah. You know, which you know that, you know, they, they shouldn't be that low in the table, but you know, they're playing some very poor football and couldn't win and then they paid, they, they spent so much to get new signings. Still couldn't get a team going. You know? We've there, probably there got the same one. Who, yeah. who, go on then. You want to go? Uh, I was thinking either Chelsea or Manchester United. Yeah. Uh, thinking which one, which one. I think I still go for Chelsea. Same. Oh, one billion, yep. one billion in transfers. Yeah. One billion pounds. Even the fans, uh, you know, if you go on TikTok, you, you search for Chelsea fans. There are some fans, every day, is every week is angst for them, you know. Yep. They, they say, they, and they are very blunt. One million spent of, on our team and we can't score a goal. The, the September, they couldn't, they, they scored one goal in the, <laughs> in the League Cup. Right at the last, the yeah. last week of September. Otherwise, they got to... That there's a joke going around that they, if they find the September goal of Monday, they go try looking for the training. <laughs> it's sessions. great. It's great. Yeah. It's great. No, I agree with you. For me, watching Chelsea at the moment is like watching the I don't know the final days of the Roman Empire. <laughs> it's all this excess and bloated greed, oh. and they're all sitting around and they can't work out why all their wealth and fame is not enough to keep them on top. But yeah. you've got these younger, hungrier people coming through, and you're just waiting for them to literally and metaphorically explode this yeah. bloated mass of excess. Yeah, but unfortunately now they've gone to a little, got somewhat better in the last few weeks. I'm like, oh, come on, yeah. go yeah. back to your dysfunctional times, please. Go back uh, to your hedonistic Roman orgy style yeah. of excess. That's yeah. what we want at Chelsea. Yeah. We, we also, also a shout out to Man U, Manchester of course. United, coming a pretty close second to Chelsea in yep. dysfunctionality. But yeah. Well, that ties in nicely with my next one, which is, I'll go first on this, least valuable oh, player. I think, I think we've got the same one as well. Least valuable player has to be Andre yeah. no arms Onana. The only man, the only magician I've ever seen who can make his own arms disappear. Normally, you've got to put someone in a box, you know, where yeah. they saw them in half and all that kind of thing. All Onana has to do is dive. Once he dives left or dives right, his <laughs> oh, arms just vanish. It's it's I've never seen goalkeeping like it. Yeah. Where he, he does this arc where he dives over the ball. And Smichael, Peter Smichael has pointed oh. out, there's a flaw in his P technique. Peter Smichael is having fits every time I right. see him when he talks about Onana. I mean, I used to be a junior goalkeeper yeah. and basic technique is you dive across the ground yeah. so you've got some ballast behind you. But he does this weird arc-like thing which allows the ball to pass under, <laughs> between, through. I, I don't know how he does it. It's inexplicable. You know? He used to be so good when he was in Inter Milan. I don't know what, what happened. And I you know... If you want to buy a new keeper and sell your and, and sell your your old reliable goalkeeper in David, who yeah. was one of my favorite yeah. shop stoppers, I know he was. You not sell him. You want to release him on a free transfer. Yeah, release him from the squad. You best you best have this new new goalkeeper do something fantastic as fantastic as the here. Already the defense, the the Manchester defense is so so. Yeah. You got Harry Maguire, who is a walking time bomb. Yeah, um, and then. Martinez is now injured. Um, Rafael Verne also injury prone. You got Lindelof. Yep. Luke Shaw is injured. Ah, the 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 the, the, the defense already pretty pretty bad. You you need a, a reliable goalkeeper like Liverpool's Allison. You know, of course. You, they, the defense knows that if if ever the ball crosses the last path of line, okay, they, they we have Allison at the back who could scoop out all the all these mistakes that we make mm. most of the time. And then I just mix mistakes. Yeah. You know, the, the ball goes through, they just... Yeah, but it's, it's funny though, right? It's LVP. It's <laughs> least valuable player. The first thing I... 
First thing I thought must be him. 40 something million. 42? 47? 47, might be 47. Oh, it's funny though. It's funny. <laughs> I mean, I mean, obviously it's entertaining, but oh, oh. I mean I do feel for the guy because he's he's yeah. try he's coming to the wrong club at the wrong time. True. With the kind of wrong skill set, I know they wanted to play out from the back, but they don't have the players around him. Harry Maguire, how do you play from from the back? But he can't save shots. <laughs> Everybody's having a shot at this guy. Oh, I mean, oh. you can stick my daughter in to take a shot at this guy. They're shooting from the box, inside, oh. outside. He's going to have a long, long road back to convincing oh, I the agree. United fans. Man. All right, or well, something positive, most valuable player. Most valuable player. I'm going to go with Declan Rice oh, okay. because good choice, good choice. when he was sold from West Ham to Arsenal for 100 million, 105 million, everyone was saying it's too expensive. The price tag will be this Achilles heel. That's cheap now. Now every midfielder goes for more than 100 million, right? Any crap midfielder is 100 million now. So that tag has been forgotten yeah. already. And in the recent game, against uh, Manchester City, you saw what they've gained and what Manchester City had lost with Rodri yep. being suspended. suspended. Mm. That's the kind of a game that Declan Rice was signed for mm. and he's delivering. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. early in the season, yeah. but he's delivering. He's yeah. great. I'm surprised you didn't choose James Ward-Prowse. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> Take all that back. <laughs> James Ward-Prowse. No, no, no. I'll stick with Declan. Okay. Yeah, that's a good shout. James yeah. Ward-Prowse. Yeah. yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. For me, I mean, if again, I have a biased opinion. Dominic Sabosa will be my choice if I were to include. He has really impressed me. He we saw really, him in yeah. Singapore, and I was a little bit. Mm, but yeah, he's but, been great. Yeah, he has been like you know pulling the strings of the the good uh, Liverpool offense. But if I, but if I put out Liverpool again, be be a more fair. I think James Madison. Yeah, I think has been yeah, key on. to why um, Tottenham are now top of the league. Yeah, that's a good shout. Uh, yeah, so so no. Tottenham lost Harry Kane in the mm. postseason. You never know how they're going to react when they lose such a talismanic striker. Mm. And you know they've haven't they haven't lost yet. They're still unbeaten. Yeah. Um. They've obviously. I don't think they're firing on all cylinders yet. They're not like a like a Manchester City or Arsenal mm. side in full flow. But you know they're grinding out results and they they rely on James Madison as the central focus, central playmaker. Guy who guides, to, who pulls the strings like so boss like I think he's a, done a fantastic job, yep. you know, allowing Son to continue scoring with him in support, and he also chips in with the occasional goal. No, I think that's a great yeah. shout because yeah. it's contributed to their all round team play yeah. now. Whereas yeah. before, Harry would have to drop deep, Harry Kane would drop deep, the play would slow yeah. down. Now it's much faster, much more direct. That's a great shout, and it ties in very nicely to my favorite category, which is team or player. You have an irrational reaction to. Could be positive, could be negative. Could be positive, yeah. could be negative. Yeah. I My know. irrational reaction is to a team, you can probably guess, <laughs> and it's to Tottenham Hotspur. Yeah. Because growing up, it was very straightforward. I grew up in East London. <laughs> We hated Tottenham yep. and Tottenham hated West Ham. Everybody knew where they stood. Right. It was very black and white. There was no indecision. I hate you. You hate me. Everybody's happy. Right. Then Ange Postacoglu bloody comes along <laughs> and messes everything up. Yeah. Suddenly I'm yearning now. I'm yearning for Tottenham. I want Tottenham to win. When I saw the North London derby, I felt these disturbing feelings rising up going, for the first time in my life, I don't want Arsenal to win the North London derby. And it's purely because of him. It's purely because of that Aussie man. I loved him at Brisbane Raw. I liked him at Melbourne. I love what he did in Japan. I love his personality, his attitude to life. And damn it, Postacoglu, you've got me liking a team I am supposed to hate by law. By law. I don't know what to do. So that's my one. An irrational Have they played West Ham yet? Have they have? Oh, no, I don't go that far. Oh, okay. I, let's not get carried away. I hope West Ham pummel okay. them. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. But if they're playing anybody else, yeah. I don't mind. Uh, fair enough. What about you? I mean, this is like, I mean, usually I'm disdainful of uh, clubs that are, that are just gone up. I know they'll straight go down and like, yep. don't care much about them. But Luton Town, yes, that's a good one. Luton that's Town good one. has given me like, uh, I, I really want to support them no matter what happens to them in this season. I know they're probably yeah. going to go down. They're going to, you know, they're going to lose badly on several occasions. But one look at Kenilworth Road. Yeah. And because when I first started watching uh, football in 1986, watching English football in 1986. All the stadiums were like Kenilworth Road. Yes. Yeah. All the stadiums are that 
decrepit yeah. looking. Oh, that was Upton Park. Uh, panel. Rectangular, yeah. low stands. Yes, yeah. low stands, no, yep. about ten or 15,000 in that stadium. The, the the player's tunnel, which I saw during the Spurs game last week, it was like that narrow. Yeah. And everybody's like squeezing together, not like those spacious. You can see all the terraced yeah. houses. Yeah, you can see all the terraced houses. The stadium. And then mostly the, the, the fans themselves don't take them the, 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 too seriously. There was this great story about... Um, uh, this mask they've taken to this guide dog Jerry mm. as a mascot, you know, because uh, the, the, his, his, the, the his owner Matt can't see a thing. Mm. I, I mean, I think he could barely see. I think that does, but but you know, the dog is there every time, and, and he sleeps during the matches. <laughs> he doesn't even tell, doesn't even alert the 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 the, the fan, but he just sleeps, and then the 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 fan, the Matt Matt, the owner is there, and then. They 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 said they want to rename the 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 stadium to Kennel World <laughs> Kennel the, where the dog house is. Nice. So so you know it's this nice story. So you just I just can't help but feel like okay I'm throwing my full support on Luton Town uh, this season. Uh, I'm gonna watch their games. Uh, I know they're gonna lose. I got they don't, they're not gonna even play spectacular football. Mm. But. I'm all for them. In, no, in the I agree. Group, yeah. It's a sweet story. I would like them to stay in the Premier League. You were tweeting me yeah. saying, I love their crappy stadium. <laughs> yeah, I, it was so patronising. <laughs> I love their crappy stadium. It's fantastic. <laughs> now, I would like to see Luton uh, yeah. do well. I, I doubt it, but I hope. But it's a nice segue. Speaking of minnows, mm. small... Mm. Uh, David Beckham, the world's biggest footballer. <laughs> Couldn't be more different to Luton Town if you tried. As we sit here, he's number one everywhere. Whoa. His new Netflix documentary is the number one show in every Netflix territory across the world. He's back. He's back yeah, front and yeah. centre again. All of, not, all of a sudden, he's like everywhere again. What did you think of it? I mean, the documentary obviously was uh, about somewhat safe. Yes. You know, it, it doesn't tell you too much. Yep. But it offers you just enough so that, you know, yep. it draws you in, you know. There's this current viral thing about Posh Spice. Yes. You no, know, saying that he's she's from the working class. Yeah, right, Victoria. Yeah. <laughs> and, she, and got picked up from school in a Rolls Royce. Rolls Royce, so yes. working class, yeah. But okay. Um and and Beckham has also appeared on some podcast, very mm. famous podcast like Stick It Stick to Football. Yeah, the That's overlap. The, yeah. Yeah, the overlap, stick to football. Um and you know I I do feel that it has come at a very good timing because Manchester United are not exactly doing well at the moment. So there's a lot of feeling of nostalgia mm. for among the, the old Manchester United fans who grew up watching Beckham and the class of 92 dominating English Premier League uh, in the 90s. So, you know, it's about 20 years already. Mm. Or more than 20 years already. And, 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 and you know, now the documentary comes out, everybody's like a good feeling again. Ah, oh, it's Beckham. I remember how good he was. You know, and then everything that he does, you no, know, even the the thing that he opposes, Fergie, you know that that you know mm. he had a run run-ins with uh, Alex Ferguson, all is seen in a very softer light. Yeah, you know? even Fergie's on it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they, they, they didn't nice. talk for a few years, and yeah. now they're, they're all patched up. Yeah. So so everything's feel good, nostalgia, mm. and then uh, the team's crap right now. But yeah, and yeah. they're playing Oasis and yeah. all the nineties songs, and now it really does tap into the nostalgia. What? the Beckham documentary reminds me is the level of fame that Oof. Beckham had at that time. Oh. I remember I interviewed Beckham in KL in, oh. well, just slip it in, <laughs> in, in 2001 at the absolute oh. peak of Beckham mania. Manchester United were uh, staying at the Palace of the Golden Horses mm. when they played at Bukit Jalil, I think yeah, it was. Eventually, they also came to Singapore. Straight before. after, yeah. yes. Definitely. So I went up to interview him first before mm. he came down here. Mm. And you think about the level of fame. I've, I'll have never forget this. It was a one-on-one -on -one as well. Just me wow. and Beckham, yeah. right? Good In news. the players' lounge. Wow. So there's Rude Van Nistelrooy in his underwear. There's Giggs having some breakfast. It, there's Paul Skulls. It was like a living Madame Tussauds waxwork museum wow. of superstars. Wow. I was the only journalist in the players' lounge. Mm. And I'm sitting with Beckham. And he does this. I'll never forget this. He did this. All he did was scratch his forearm. But he was scratching the the, the Victoria tattoo uh -huh. that I think was written in Hindi yeah, or something. It was written wrongly or something. Yes, yeah, Sanskrit really? or whatever the language was, but it was supposedly written wrongly. Yeah. And and I and it it made me, it gave me goosebumps because I thought 
I know more about that tattoo than any other tattoo on the planet right now. <laughs> that was the level of fame yeah. that that man had at the moment. Yeah. I knew everything about that man's forearm. And now it was in front of me. And just before the interview, he'd walked past me in not quite his underwear, but he just had a vest and, and, and shorts on. And it, and I, I've, it's the job. You interview everybody. Yeah. But even I was like, geez, that's David Beckham. Yeah, yeah. That was the level of fame he had that I think comes across when he watched the documentary. Yeah. Um, and it was a nice feel-good uh, documentary. Yeah. yeah. Go, go and watch, watch it on yeah. Netflix if you want. Um, but we're going to also, if you don't, if you are watching that, why don't you watch other great um, 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 podcasts on, on this online? You know, I, I like to watch The Rest is Football. That's a great one. That's a great one. Gary Lineker, yeah. Michael Alan Richards Shearer. and yeah. Alan Shearer. Yeah. Michael Richards is... Is is just gold on 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 the mic. yeah he's gold yeah he's yeah. Gold. yeah so you know watch it watch that one watch the overlap yep. watch stick to football that's yep. that's a that's an excellent podcast too yep together with this Beckham thing yeah and maybe yeah uh, watch it with our our podcast too yeah. you get a full picture of the, yeah the but when he's finished plugging other podcasts yeah. I'll just say that our podcast is the only one that gives you a chance to win stuff or get discounted stuff <laughs> from uh, Starhub. See what I did yeah, there? Yeah, See what I did nice there? Nice segue, nice segue. Tell them about Star. So what do we got this one? Starhub, now subscribe for Premier League Plus package. You get all the live bro- live telecasts of all the EPL games all season. Wonderful, right? Plus, they give you one more thing, even better. One year free broadband. Brilliant. Just subscribe now. Brilliant. And the last thing I'll say about the, pod, uh, the, uh, the Beckham documentary, yeah. I love Roy Keane. He's hilarious. Oh, yeah. And I love Gary Neville on it. And my favourite line from Gary Neville was, David Beckham was the meat and I was the mustard. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's no mustard on here. We're both mustards. Are we meat or mustard? Anything mustard. Well, well for meat and mustard, take care. <laughs> we'll see you again very soon. Don't forget to come back for part two, as always, where we get stuck into all things Singapore football. football. All the best. Take care. Take care.